Peaches with Livingston and Ted Jellet too. And our host, Fitz and Lando, and he brings it to you. <laughs> Creature Features and all creatures. The Ghoul. You know, Livingston, years ago I was quite keen for this fetching young lady, but she refused my advances, insisting that I myself was in fact a ghoul. Can you fathom that? Never mind. I suppose if one cannot obtain validation from one's own butler, then one should not seek to obtain it at all. Why, thank you, love. Tangela says that ghouls are the most enchanting people, and she has many ghoul friends of her own. Welcome to Creature Features. You've all met my gracious ward Tangella and my cantankerous valet, Mr. Livingston, and I am your host for the next few rotations of the clock, Vincent Van Dahl. Have we a glorious show in store for you tonight? First up, we'll be showing 1933's The Ghoul, starring everyone's favorite monster thespian, Boris Karloff. It's an interesting film indeed. Picture it as something of a spooky British version of It's a Mad Mad World. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And joining us for the screening of the Shepperton Studios classic will be the very unghoulish Academy Award-nominated actor, Eric Roberts. He'll tell us what he thinks of this film and chat with us about all the splendid things he's been up to recently. I still don't know how you managed to book this one. It was easy. He still owed me a favor from the time I procured him backstage passes to the Rolling Stones. So don't go away, because it's going to be another night of Boris Karloff Fright, right here on Creature Features. Oh, I rather like that. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. It is Saturday night, and you and I and Eric Roberts are on Creature Features. It's going to be a fun night, right? I can't wait. No, it's going to be wonderful. You know, we've been trying to get this chat forever. He's, I'm he's so busy. Road. I'm always on the road, and then I'm finally home. He got me. I know. Well, you know, it's it's good that you're working because, you know, sometimes we get actors who come in, they say, oh, I've got nothing to do, so I came and did your show. My wife asked me in 1993, she says to me, if you could do anything every day of your life, what would it be? I said, I'd be on a movie set every day. She goes, that's not going to happen. Then 2003 comes, everybody can afford a camera because we, we gave up film. Right. She said, I think you can be on a set every day because everybody's calling. So, you should be a producer. You so I started being on sets every day. I love my job. I don't want to be a producer. I like my job. You want to be in front of the cameras. Yeah. You should be. I You've got a face job. made for film and TV. I've got a face made for radio. Nah, I should not. be doing a radio show. But but you're on camera. I am. You made a mistake. Well, you know, it, it, it makes, it's a, it's a creepy show, so people cringe more when they see this face announcing the film. You're not really spooky looking, though, yeah. pal. I've been told I am, but thank you. See, mm. compliments from Eric Roberts. It's going to be a really, really good night. So we're going to watch The Ghoul, 1933. Have you seen it? Can't wait. No, I haven't. Can't wait. So it's going to be a surprise for you, a surprise yeah. for me, and maybe a surprise for you. So let's start the film. When we come back, I'm going to ask you like a thousand questions. I can't wait. All right. Off we go, the ghoul. You guys stay with us.
We don't want to buy no lie, no, no nothing. Mr. Dragore, please. Oh, him. No sound, please. After two years, I find you. I want the eternal light. You found me too late. It's no longer mine. I can kill with this from the end of the room. No lies, please. You cannot kill in England, Mahmoud. They, they get their murderers here and hang them. I have not come alone. If I hang, there are others. The eternal light goes back to the tomb from which you stole it. But I tell you, I have not got it. Please, I am not a child. I... I sold it. To whom did you sell it? To Professor Morland. That robber of the dead. Has he sold it? He did not buy to sell. What then? Like you, Mahmoud. She believes. Believes? He believes that the eternal light will open for him the gates of paradise? Even so, he gave the best part of his fortune for it. And very soon he will know whether or not he was right. What do you mean? Professor Morland is dying. Then you think it will be buried with him? I'm sure of it. We have only got to wait until he is dead. I knew this. Open out of the way. I happened to be staying in the neighborhood, and hearing of your master's illness, I took the liberty of calling. How is he tonight? He'll never see the morning. He hasn't asked for anyone of my cloth. Nor will he. He's set in his ways, and they're the ways of the heathen. I know he won't see the rector, but though I'm a comparative stranger, I don't like to leave a man to die like that. He'll die in his own fashion, as he has lived. Still, sometimes at the end. Not with him. He's stubborn and unbending and will be so at the throne itself. Well, I suppose I can be of no use then. No manner of use. Good night. They're asking for you. Where can I find Mr. Brown? Who is it? Come in or go out. have to go up soon if you want to see him again. Curious house, this. Curious owner. Yes, but I suppose a great Egyptologist can't be expected to be like other people. 
Well, he'll be like a great many other people soon. That's not a very sympathetic thing to say. Well, I'm not a sympathetic man. Want a drink? That's, uh, across the hall, isn't it? I dare say. Thanks. Seventy-five thousand, September twenty-second, nineteen thirty-one. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still watching The Ghoul with the most non-ghoulish actor we've had in this chair. That will teach you to steal expensive jewelry that doesn't belong to you. I know, especially yeah. a ruby, a cursed ruby. A cursed ruby, right. Eric Roberts, I cannot believe you're with us tonight. Yeah. This is wonderful. I can't either. You I know, love it. I, Bodega Bay is not a place we normally have stars like you. We normally have like people from the news coming out of Bodega Bay, <laughs> like newscasters. People, people, people from the news are very valuable people. Of course, but you know, they're not like quite as famous as you. No, they are. They are? Yeah, they're, they're in, in everybody's households every day and everybody looks forward to seeing them every day. They're, they're, I don't. It's they're all bad welcome news. celebrities. Yes, it's they are. bad news. Yes, they are. So you were telling me during the break that uh, you did a film with Stallone. Two films. Two films. And you did a wonderful impersonation that these folks would like to hear of Stallone. If I had known about human growth hormone, I'd have never done steroids. <laughs> that is perfect. You know, if, if I ever get Stallone in that chair, I'm going to have him do an Eric Roberts impersonation. I bet it's not going to be as good. I bet it's not going to be as good. No, no. no. So acting, I mean, this, this like takes up your entire life and you love it. I love acting like I love my wife every single day. And so you don't mind having a long film where you're stuck for months and months doing film? Or do you, like, it all need depends. A break? I've had a couple of movies where I've been places that weren't appetizing, that were not romantic, that were not warm. And uh, I've had not fun times on locations. But every location is its own adventure. Of course. What's the worst location you've, you've been to? The tundra of Alaska. Uh, they would drop, drop J John and I out of a helicopter and they'd fly away and they would shoot us running across the tundra. And I was in tennis shoes and it was pretty awful. And this is for which film? It was a, it was a movie called Runaway Train, a very good movie. Oh. Andre, Andre Kontralowski, oh, the director. Goodness. Yeah. Well, how long were you up there? Uh, we were up there about, I guess, I don't know, three months. I don't remember really. Eight, Alaska. ten weeks. You know, I went once. Twelve weeks. What? I went once to Alaska. And? Only once. And everywhere I went, they said, oh, you should have been here last week. There was like salmon jumping and, and bears out in the water. And I saw nothing. Not one bit of wildlife. I saw there. everything. You I saw, saw everything. baby bear with their moms, baby moose with their moms. I saw everything you can think of. I saw it. And I saw uh, tourists. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Quite a few. Now, I'm going to go back again because 
now that you've told me that there are actually bears there, I'm going to go back. Oh, there are. Did you know that that uh, that Alaska is also the um, the land of the resettled outlaw, and that everybody who has light warrants after their arrest all moves to Alaska? Well, that's what Jesse Pinkman did in Breaking Bad, right? There you go. It's amazing. All right, well, I'm getting the signal. We got to get back to this film, but when we okay. come back, I've got more questions about your movies. You you work with Batman. I've never worked with Batman before. Christian Bale, Christian the man. Christian Bale, the man. All right, back to the ghoul. We'll be back soon. Stay with us. I want to see land. I'm here. Is the door shut? It is. No listeners? None. The curtains? They are drawn. Come nearer. This man, Brockman. Watch, Brockman. You were always suspicious. Have you ever trusted a living soul? Only fools. I trust you. Better to trust in the spirit than in the flesh. I put my trust in my own God. Now, when I am dead, my funeral, you will bury me at dusk in the clothes I told you. You will place the figure of Anubis at the west of the inner chamber. I will. And on the night of the full moon, At the first hour, I will make my offering of the eternal light to our newest, opener of the ways. If I have done well in his sight, those fingers will close over the jewel. And he will open to me the gates of immortality. The hand of a heathen image will now come to life. Ah, oh, the bandage, the bandage. Look. This is the eternal light. It must rest in my hand. A man will no find peace who robs his heirs. Bandage my hand. The eternal light must lie with me in the tomb. Are you are afraid of me. I'm afraid for you. If this should leave me, then you'll have reason to fear. For when the full moon strikes the door of my tomb, I will come back. You hear? 
I will come back to kill. Bandage my hand. All over. Make out a certificate. Heart failure. What was the idea of bandaging his hand like that? I cannot say. He had many a queer fancy. I'll be round in the morning to sign the certificate. I'll no be leaving my master's side till his body is laid to rest. Where are you going? To feed the lamp that is to burn inside.
Wait. They're leaving the key inside. Aye. That was another of his queer fancies. When your master died, Lang, I believe him to have been possessed of a jewel of great value. Do you know anything about it? Nothing. I advise you to be very careful, Lang. I have a careful nature. You may be putting yourself perilously near dishonesty. I've seen men nearer. You may regret this, Lang. To stay here and watch that man with a club foot. Oh, I'm not a detective, Mr. Broughton. One more word for you, Davis, and you're out of work. I have reason to believe that he has stolen a valuable piece of property. He may make an effort to get rid of it. Watch him and telephone me at my office if he leaves the house. Very good, sir. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. We'll get back to the ghoul shortly and we'll get Eric back at some point, right? I hope so. He has things to do. But first, we're going to do some letters. Right, Tangela? This is like her favorite part of the show. Only because she gets to show off all the toys. What do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? I have a letter from San Jose. San Jose. One of my favorite cities. And I know the way to San Jose. Uh, all right. Good one, sir. It is a good one. Jose Snoopy. We've heard from you before. It's an unforgettable name. Jose Snoopy. All right. Oh, it's art, I think. 
Oh my goodness, I'm supposed to read all this? Jose, you know, this is like only a two hour show. Look at this amazing thing he drew though. That looks like uh, skull. Eddie. No, it's Eddie from, uh, oh, it's Eddie from uh, Iron Maiden. You know, I know those blokes, they would like this photo. All right, here he goes. Hey, Mr. Vincent Livingston and goddess of the night, Tangela, it's Jose Snoopy. Shout out to my YouTube creature feature, Hive Chatting Friends. You guys on YouTube are troublemakers, but we love you. I want to start off by saying thank you for taking the time at Comic-Con and chatting and also taking pictures. I wanted to wish you guys an early happy Samhain. That's Halloween, right? Samhain? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. We got the note a bit late. And for keeping me rooted in my passion of horror flicks. And also for making my Saturday nights more thrilling. Well, you make ours thrilling as well. P.S. If you happen to have any requests, Elvira flicks are always a good pleasure. Jose Snoopy. All right. So uh, Elvira would never let me run one of her films. Because I don't think she likes me anymore. She used to. But um, I think I made her angry somehow. What? Are you going to hang that up in your room? No doubt. Yeah, you've got a fan now, Hoser. All right, what do we got next, sir? Uh? Billings, Montana. Oh, I love Billings. Wait, it's not the Billings department, though, right? No. Oh, it's from Clint Young, another person that we know. Now he has a Batmobile. It's a real Batmobile. He does. He has, he has a real Batmobile. Oh, my goodness. If you what say is this? so. Oh, this is amazing. All right, let me read the letter first, and I'm going to show you what this is. All right, you be quiet over there. Look at her. She likes your art, Hoser. All right. Hi, Vincent. Wanted to send you one of my original unopened creature feature packs from 1973. All right. Look at this. This is a bubblegum thing that says creature features and it's like collector cards, right? This is probably worth something. You cannot have this and the gum is no good anymore. You cannot chew this gum. It's probably poisonous by now, but I, I do want to look at what's inside because it's unopened. Oh, and it's, so should it stay as a collector's item. Oh, all right. I won't open it then. All right, let's read on. He goes, uh, don't know if you've ever seen these before or if you've ever collected them, but I thought you might like one. I've never seen them because I was not raised around here. They are very cool and came with three monster cars inside and a stick of gum. The cards featured different monster scenes from all kinds of scary movies and had funny sayings on them. The back of each card had a joke or a riddle on it. They were a huge success and great fun to collect as a kid. I still have the whole collection of cards. I also have an original box along with 14 open, unopened packs in it. This would be look good hanging on your wall in the background there. Anyways, enjoy this blast from the past, Clint Young, Millie, Billings, Montana. Well, thank you so much, Clint. We will put this in a place of honor, but you know, if we put it back there, nobody would ever see it. So we're going to find another way to display it. Thanks again. And any more mail? One more. Email from Texas. Email from Texas is always good. All right. This one comes from Pete Whitmore in Louisville, Texas. You've been there before, haven't you? Louisville? But it's not, it's not like Louisville, Kentucky. It's not spelled with an O. It's spelled with an L-E-W. That would be Louisville. Uh, Mr. Technical here. All right. Dear Creature Features, why don't you guys ever show any Marilyn Monroe pictures? She was pretty. Or how about a Raquel Welch film? Wasn't she in some kind of dinosaur movie? Or what about Sandy Duncan? Lovely lady, and she sang like a stork. I like them all. I also like salad. Pete Whitmore, Louisville, Texas. Well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing about Texas. You guys have a very unique perspective on things, and I appreciate that. Is that it? That's it. All right, that's it for mail. If you'd like to send us email, use the address you see appearing right here. Or if you'd like to send something in the post, like our friend Clint, then send it uh, down to this address here in the post. Eric will be right back, but right now we're going to get back to the ghoul. You guys stay with us.
Pardon. Miss Betty Harlan, 52 Blanford Street. Ten shillings if you'll drive me to Yaxford Station in time to catch the five o'clock train. I'll oblige you, Governor. I was going straight back as it was. It's a very old carpet, Mr. Morland. I should be glad if you will not kick it to pieces. I'm sorry. When I'm angry, I do kick. You could have to explain that. Yes, I intend to. By your own statement, Miss Holland and I are the sole heirs of Professor Morland. We were informed neither of his death nor of his funeral. Your uncle died and was buried in a certain way according to his wishes, which need I go on. Almost his last words were a threat to return from the dead. In my opinion, he was mad. Well, that may be so. But Miss Holland and I should have been consulted. But I understood that you and Miss Holland were not on speaking terms. Well, what of that? You expect quiet at a funeral, don't you? Yes, I also expect it in my office. I'm very sorry, but after all, this means a good deal to both of us. Our uncle was worth about 4,000 a year. Well, he isn't now. What do you mean by that? He spent a good deal, you know. It may surprise you to know that some time ago he drew a cheque for 75,000 pounds. What for? I don't know. You don't know? You were in charge of all his affairs and you don't know? That's what I said. And I advise you to look after the tone of your voice. I'm not at all sure. I have much more important things to look after than the tone of my voice. I don't follow you. I'm going to run down to Owlsvale House tomorrow morning. Yes, well, I... I don't think you realize the... conditions that you'll find there. No. That's why I propose to go. You won't like it. You'll be most uncomfortable. You don't advise me to go? I think you'll be making a very big mistake. Then I'll go. Oh, by the way, does Miss Harlan know anything about this will business? No doubt she will have received a letter from me by now. Do you know Miss Harlan? No. I propose to give myself the pleasure of calling upon her this evening. Hello. Oh, it's you, Davis. Wait a minute. I have a visitor here, but I think he's just going. Thank you very much. If you're going to see Miss Harlan tonight, I shall be there myself. No doubt you will succeed in making a painful interview intolerable. Good afternoon. Your manner must help your practice a great deal. Now, Davis.
Can you direct me to Blandford Street, please? Follow the tram lines, close on a mile, and then turn right at the church. I'm obliged to you. Get out of that fog. My dear, a most exciting thing has happened. Oh! Oh, don't let it happen again. No, not that. That's a chestnut. <sighs> it's this. It looks like a solicitor's letter. Mm. Just been delivered by hand. Oh, dear. What haven't we paid? I wonder if I'm going to get a shock or not. Oh! Oh, Caney, that is a silly game. After all we've said about Uncle Henry, what do you think he's done? Something nice at last? He's dead. My dear, I'm sorry. And his solicitor wants to see me. My dear, I'm glad. He was awfully rich, wasn't he? <gasps> he may have left you a fortune. If he has, I'll buy you a private cinema. Oh, I say, when did this letter come? A few minutes ago. Why? He asked me to telephone him if I could see him here at six. You don't want to miss the chance of a fortune for the sake of tuppence. You better run out and do it now. You're right. Miss Farland? Yes. Lord, it's Betty Harlan. Rafe Morland. You would go and get yourself into some kind of mix-up. You would arrive when it's all over. Thank you. Well, I'm going home. Wait a minute. I was on my way to see you, strictly on business. You wouldn't be allowed in for any other reason. That's good.
Taxi. Cunningham Garage, as quickly as possible. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. So, Eric Roberts, famous actor and thespian, and you've got the best shoes. I've, you know, I want a pair of those because those look more comfortable than these. Air Jordans are yeah. the best shoes on the planet. So, that's what an Air Jordan looks like. That's yeah. why I've never seen shoes well, like that. Well, I have all kinds of Air Jordans. This is a very conservative Air Jordan. Uh, this, is, this is the kind you wear to like Academy Award and other things. Well, well, I wouldn't go that far, but yeah, yeah right. All right, right. All right. So this film was apparently the first like horror sound film made in the UK. I heard a ever. rumor it was the first film they ever called horrific. Horrific. Well, it is somewhat horrific, but to today's standards, it's it's rather tame. I I would think. I don't know. All right, Dark Knight. You were in that film. Yeah. And you liked it. Well, I liked it, so I think you might have liked it. Maybe. I think it's. Probably visually the best looking movie I've ever seen, thanks to Wally Feaster. And he was the DP. The uh, director of photography. Right. And he's also also director in his own right. But uh, his visuals of that movie are incredible. And uh, it made the movie. I mean, you know, Christian Bale's not bad. You know, Gary Olmo's not bad. A lot of great people. But the look of that movie, oh my God. So that was like, that was your first, like, comic book superhero movie right yeah it was yeah and so what do you think of that genre well in general uh, I'm not I'm not really a fan but oh my god my wife will say don't say that they won't hire you anymore for them <laughs> uh, right. uh, I, they, it, uh, I was never a comic book guy I was never a cartoon guy right. and uh, so uh, they don't have a have a place in my heart well you know I like them but I think there's too many of them there is I mean, now sure more sure traumas sure. and things it's like you know it's as if every film is about golf now <laughs> and you go to the theater and it's like oh we're gonna go see this golf film i'm here that's like every theater has a golf film in it you're not wrong I don't know. so we'll see anyways i like that film though batman awesome all right so we need to get back to the film but when we come back i want to hear all about what you're currently working on because you're probably on something big eh? semi-big it's got to be huge if it's him. All right, we'll be right back after the next break. <laughs> Stay with us. Oh, so you brought him. Dear Mr. Broughton, we're delighted to see you. No, it isn't Mr. Broughton. It's my cousin, Rafe Morland. Dear Mr. Morland, we're delighted to see you. Wrong again. We don't like him very much. Oh, don't we? I didn't realize. Well, our two families are not on speaking terms. Oh, dear. As far as I can make out, it was started by my late uncle as a Christmas joke. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. But now he's dead. The trouble's all over. I'm not sure. It hasn't just begun. Where's Mr. Broughton? Oh, he won't come because I didn't telephone. I oh. nearly got throttled instead. Betty! There was a man with a limp. He pushed a note into my hand. I just put it in my bag when somebody snatched the whole affair. What was in it? There's something of value at Owl's Vale. Others are after it, so come. 
And Broughton was doing everything he knew to keep me away from there. There's a fox in the cover somewhere. Goodbye. Oh, why goodbye? I'm going down there right away. I'll let you know what happens. You're wrong. I'll let myself know. If you go, I go too. You can't do that. Alone in a house with a man you're not even on speaking terms with? Oh, don't be so absurd. It's not as if I even liked him. Oh, if another woman was going, perhaps. I suppose that means you want to come too. Well, obviously, it's my duty. And suppose I object? I'm not so broke I can't hire a car. Oh, all right, you win, but for goodness sake, hurry. Girls, must get in this as best you can. There you are. I'll have to walk. You might do worse. There's a grand moon. It's full. Let's see if there's a name on this gate. No, there's nothing to show. This is the place. But there aren't any other places, and I'm frozen. Well, it's no use going to the wrong place. Wait a minute, here's someone on a bike. Hi there, cocky. Wait a minute. Oh, hello. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't see you were a parson. Oh, that's all right. Any trouble? Oh, no, no. We just want to get to Owlsvale House. Well, this is it. As a matter of fact, I'm calling there myself. Oh, did you know my uncle, Professor Morland? Oh, slightly. I so I want to introduce myself. My name's Hartley, Nigel Hartley. I'm down at Raverley, the vicar's ill. How do you do? I'm Rafe Morland. This is Miss Harlem. We're the heirs of Couldn't the old... Could we have the rest of the introduction indoors? Yes, yes, of course. You must be cold. All right, straight down this drive. You go along, I'll follow. All right. I'll be all right here. I'll show you the way.
What a horrible house. I wish I was back home in bed. I can hear someone coming. Ah. Well, don't stand about. Come inside. Go to the library. I may be old-fashioned, but I feel awkward when I'm not introduced to people. I'm sorry, I forgot you didn't know your clients by sight. This is Miss Harlan. How do you do? I was expecting a telephone message from you. Oh, I was on my way to call you up when the most extraordinary thing happened. And this is Miss Caney. How do you do? You're a surprise, Broughton. I have a great deal of business to clear up down here. This house has needed a woman for about 25 years. <laughs> ah, no, I've blinded myself. You haven't wasted much time in getting here, Mr. Morland. No, just a little too much, perhaps. Whatever do you mean? Really, you're the rudest man alive. Oh, pretty pussy. How horrible. It's stuffed. I dare say you know your own business best, but why you should want to bring a parson? A pure accident. We met at the gates. So naturally, you brought him in. Broughton, I can stand a certain amount, but no more. Ah, oh, come, come, don't let's make a battle of it. You stay here in the car. No. I shall be among the trees, watching. <laughs> this is Big Dan in Santa Rosa. Just finished watching the Vincent Price flick, Last Man on Earth, with my pet scorpion Sting, and we loved it. Hey, how about a shout out to Spooky Boo? Later. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. All right, welcome back to the show. It is still that movie, The Ghoul. And you know, uh, Boris Karloff got top billing on this, and I'm surprised. Why? Because you hardly see the man. <laughs> well, he was his biggest star. You know, you, know, you know what I find fascinating? After the first five minutes of this movie, he doesn't, he doesn't really say anything else. And as an actor watching another actor, right. you think, hmm, I wonder if he was either making another movie at the time, or if, or if he was at the end of a contract, or if maybe that was how it was written, I doubt it. Maybe he was just having a bad day. Maybe he's having a bad week, it's yeah. A, I don't feel like speaking. I'm just going <laughs> to channel Frankenstein, right? right? It could yeah. be. I don't know. Who knows? So, 
music videos. I understand you're like you're like the belle of the ball of music videos now. Who knew? Yeah. All thanks to the killers. The killers. They were first. They they called me first for, for Mr. Brightside, and uh, that's a huge, very famous, wonderful song, a wonderful video, great band, and uh, that got me launched into the world of videos, and then. People like him, Ryan Carey, started calling, and I just got lucky. Made a bunch of really cool videos. Now you were telling me during the break it was not that simple. You initially denied them in your children. Well, I didn't know any better. I I, I was told uh, you've been offered a music video, and I said to somebody very flippantly, "Turn it down." And then all the kids said, "What's wrong with you, Dad? No, you have to go do it." Because it was the killers. Yeah. So I said, "Okay." So I called him back. Will you still take me back? They said, sure, please. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, so we did it. And so what was it, what was it like, the difference between like shooting a video and shooting, say, a film or well, television? Well, that, that video was a great experience because the great Sophie Mueller, the director, uh, it was like being on a movie set. And uh, every video, and I made, uh, I'm only guessing, but five to eight other videos since then. And... Uh, they're all like a drunk frat party as far as your organization goes. You right. never know where everybody's doing anything. Right. It's very confusing, except that video was like perfect. But all the other videos are like a frat party. So not quite as professional as a typical... Hollywood. I don't want to say unprofessional. No. I'll just say um, a little more uh, out of control. Because it's it's rock and roll. It's what we do. It's rock and you know, roll. We've got to we've got to like make things different. <laughs> we've got to toss televisions out of hotel windows. Right. You, know? you you can't use the regular Hollywood rules. And, you know, I tried to do this with the crew here, and they don't understand. And here's finally a man who understands how I produce television. I get it. He does. He gets it. He d he doesn't fully appreciate it, but he gets it. So um, you know, I have a confession to make to you. Hmm. So about 300 days ago, sitting in that very chair, I had Ered Brockovich. And we were talking about the film. And I told her, you know, you're actually prettier than the woman who is in the film. And when I heard you were coming, I'm thinking, hey, this man's going to punch me in the face now. Because if he sees that episode, because of what I said. No, that's not true at all. It's just I happen to know that my sister Julia is probably the most beautiful woman on the earth. So no, no matter what you say, I'm safe. I think I knew that at the time as well, but I wasn't going to say anything. She's, and if they're both wonderful. I were with Aaron Brockovich, I might say the same thing. Right. But my sister is probably the most beautiful woman on our planet right now. How is she? She's great. She's, she's, she's probably busy too, just like you. You two should start your own well, film you know, company, like Desi Lu. She's also a mother of three, you know, and uh, that's a big job. It is? Yeah. Right, right. All right, well, I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to the ghoul. Okay. But when we come back, we're going to talk about more stuff because we've got Eric Roberts here, and he's awesome. Stay with us. Who knew? You may say I have no right to express this opinion, but to my mind, it's a scandalous and disgraceful burial which may have disastrous consequences. It would be very disastrous if he came back, wouldn't it? I quite see Mr. Hartley's point. Yes, you make friends quickly, don't you? And enemies quicker. Need we have these childish squabbles? We all know the dead men don't come back. Oh, I wish I was back home in bed. Hadn't somebody better answer that? Certainly. It's your house. Very well. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I was an intimate friend of Professor Mollen. Well, you'd better come in. We seem to be giving a party. Oh. Well, thank you. My name is Aga Ben Dragore. An Egyptian? An Arab. I don't remember having heard your name. I did not flatter myself that you would. But I knew Professor Morland some years ago in Egypt. I heard of his death and of his burial in my own faith. And I hoped 
as I am leaving England tomorrow, that I might be allowed to visit his tomb. I must protest against anything of the sort. Why well, shouldn't the poor man look at his friend's tomb? I don't mind him going. I can't believe that you'd willingly encourage paganism. The Egyptians were not pagan, sir. As no doubt you know, Miss... Uh... Caney. I think you're all being very unkind to Mr. Dragore. I don't think you people realize quite how far Morland's queer ideas took him. He even believed that after his death at a certain hour, the image of Anubis would come to life in his tomb and receive his soul. It's horrible. Well, I can't see that it matters. After all, if that sort of mumbo-jumbo gave him any comfort, it I It matters a great deal. If my suggestion is likely to hurt anyone's feelings, please forget it. Oh, I think that's very sweet of you, Mr. Dragore. Oh, your sympathy is more than charm. <laughs> well, what about a cup of coffee after your cold drive? I dare say we should find some in the kitchen. May I offer my services as pantry man? Uh, quite sweet of you. Come, Mr. Dragore. For sheer speed. She'll not let him out of her sight for a moment now. Perhaps that's just as well. Come along, Betty. How about making a fire in the library? Yes. I'm sorry there should be this sort of atmosphere. After all, we're only ships that pass in the night. Hmm. You want a drink or will you pass now? Uh, oh, well, thank you very much. There you are. Oh, if you build it that way, there won't be any draught. Well, it'll be the only place in this house where there isn't one, then. Oh, don't you think you carry those snappy retorts a trifle too far? Since we met, I can't remember you saying a kind word to anyone. Perhaps you're right. I'm sorry. Six cups. That's just, just far too many, eh? Tell me about Egypt. Have you ever seen a sheik? I am one. quite well. Oh, don't be alarmed. We're not quite as uncivilized as people think. Oh, don't say that. Do you ride a white stallion? Sometimes. Oh, down the path of the moon. The noble animal plunging and frothing up the nostrils till it founders at your feet, faithful unto death. Well, not very often. You see, it's rather too expensive. Well, I know it's not your fault. We were taught to hate one another, but... Good Lord, you don't think I hate you, do you? Well, I can't somehow feel I'm your dearest friend. You never did have a great deal of sense, did you? Oh, that's nice. Rafe, I have a woman's intuition that you and I are up against things. Yes, I'm pretty sure we are. Well, then, let's cut the quarrelling. Shoulder to shoulder, eh? All right? Partners. Partners? Ah. Oh. Wonderful night. It's a full moon. Scared of a dead man in his tomb? Shame on yourself. Are you a child that your knee should rattle at the talk of a madman? 
Look your enemy in the face. It's the fear the big door has got you and will hold you fast till you stare it down. Do dead men walk? I'm no thinking a dead man will cross my path tonight. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Now I will show you how we make coffee in the desert, underneath the stars. But you don't make it yourself, do you? No, of course not. A Circassian slave, lovely as sin, cooks it for us, kneeling. And if it is not to our liking... I know. She's stripped to the waist and lashed for miles across the Sahara. Where she is finally eaten by locusts, and rightly. Now, take this canister and do exactly as I tell you. And if I fail? The Yorkshire Moors are just behind us. Now, six spoonfuls. One. <gasps> Two. 
three, four, Away from me. What's the matter with you? Are you mad, eh? What was the matter with him? Was it drink? No. Terror. Stark terror. Oh, then I've caught it. You stay here. I'll look after him. If you must look out for somebody, why look further? Eh? Come on, then. Rafe! That limp, I'd swear to it anywhere. Yeah, did you give a note to the Gather family? up your things and get out of here. The master, I've seen him. You. <coughs> Full scream. I did. That's the last time I'll ever try to make coffee in a strange house. That man with a limp. Who was he? Lang. Your uncle's servant. Well, he seemed mad to me. Yes, and probably dangerous. You others had better go into the library. I'll have a word with him. Yes, come along. Mr. Broughton understands the men. It would do no harm to warn my man to stand by. Your man? Is he a chic too? No, no, he's his chauffeur. He's outside now with my car. Oh, you're not leaving us, are you? My dear lady. Not a very courageous person, our foreign friend. You think he's run away? Absurd. I'd like to see you riding your bicycle with a Circassian slave, lovely as sin, across the handlebars. What on earth are you talking about? Now listen, good people. Good people? Don't you think perhaps we're allowing this thing to get on our nerves? Don't you think perhaps if we took a grip on our self-control... Now listen, good parson. This is our show and our nerves are probably just as good as the next man's. So keep that sort of talk for your pulpit. Oh, well, of course, I have no wish to interfere where I'm not wanted. Then don't. This is not a Sunday school. After that, I think I can say good night. As you please. Well, I'm sorry I was offensive. Good night. Oh, well, the tongue is an unruly member, is it not? Yes. Yes. I was tempted. I was tempted, but I did not fall. I did not fall. The thing's safe. I swear it. When you told me you'd come back from the grave, how could I believe you? I never knew such things could be.
Diablo got it. The girl. She has it. I swear it. What's the matter with you? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. I have. I saw Morland as plainly as I see you. I'm going to mix myself a drink. Betty, just a minute. Well? I have an idea they're trying to scare us out of this house. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We're still with the wonderful, amazing, and quite friendly Eric Roberts, famous actor. You know, Golden Globe and Academy Award nominations. I think this year you're going to win something. I mean, official, big. You know, the first time I was ever nominated, it was for Best Newcomer in 1978 for my first movie. Well, you can't get that one now. And I didn't know, <laughs> you're right. I didn't, I didn't know that I really wanted to win up till, and the winner is somebody else. And I went, oh wow, I wanted to win that. And ever since then, I've never wanted to win a trophy because I never believed I could. So it's always been like. Well, you've won the hearts of millions. So that's even better than a trophy, right? Thank right. Thank you. And I was quite impressed when you told me about this uh, animal work that you do and your love M of animals. My wife and I rescue everything you can think of, but the most fun rescue we ever ever got involved in was um, I found a little hurt squirrel that fell out of a nest once and I took it to the ASPCA and they right. fixed it and they said can we bring it back to, to your property of course we said sure so bring it back oh my god you have these great trees can we bring all the hurt squirrels here when they get well we said sure so 300 squirrels later 300? we have an apartment building in all our trees all these nests in all our trees and they're all and they're and they're missing tails or feet or right, ears or whatever because right. they're all hurt they got well but they're all hand tamed and they're all sweet and if you don't know them they will approach you en masse and so frightening to some people oh my god your squirrels are a little aggressive no they're they're you've sweet you've got to you've got to make video of this oh it's great yeah you've got got to get that area alexa camera you were speaking of before and you're right i should squirrels, i should squirrels. i should you're well right. you know our tangella who you probably saw for a moment she's got goats She's rescued some goats. I love goats. Well, you know the thing about goats, you don't really have to rescue them. All you have to say is we have an orphan goat and like 500 people show up for the goat, so. My aunt and uncle, Albert and Shirley, always had goats. So I was always around them, I loved them. You know, technically this is not a farm. It's, it's like just like a manor, an estate. A yard. But you know, they take care of all the poison oak and the fire risk, it's a good thing. So what do you think about this movie? Should we get back to it or should we like switch it off to something else? Let's go to something else because you know he 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 uh, he doesn't talk. He doesn't talk very much. No, no, it's not it's not something that was pitched very well as a, <laughs> for for his IMDb. Who knows? All right, we're gonna get back to the ghoul, but when we come back, we're gonna find out what exactly you're doing next. And it's okay. gonna be exciting, right? Of course it is. Off we go. The ghoul. Stay with us.
There's no use blinding ourselves to the fact. There must be something pretty big at stake. Something that depends on getting rid of us? That's how it looks to me. Well, what are we going to do? Betty, I'm going down to that tomb and find out whether well, it's the only way we've got of finding out what's going on around here. Well, I don't want to be left here alone. Can I come too? There's nothing wrong with your nerve. Come on. Yours? Yes. I'll keep an eye on Browton. Well, I think you've every chance of seeing things if you lower scotch at that pace.
Oh, Mr. Dragore, I'll come up to you. Wait, I'll come down. What do you want? There was somebody in the library. Who? I don't know. The door, it shut, it shut. Don't I... scream. Oh, that's what I need. The command in your wonderful voice. Come with me. I think you've gone far enough with your insinuations. Yes, and I may go a great deal farther. What is it? What's the matter? I've seen him. Now perhaps you'll believe what I told you. Get me a glass of water quickly, will you? Rotten, see if you can find Miss Caney, will you? It's wonderful to be with a man who isn't afraid. I am afraid. You, who have ridden barebacked over the desert. If you don't stop chattering, I'm afraid I shall have a knife in my back. But when I'm with you, I have to talk. It comes like poetry. Are you prepared to obey me? In anything. Then close your eyes and don't speak for ten seconds. sometimes. I felt his hands on me. That's why I know it was no ghost. It was no ghost. Look at the clock. It's nearing the hour. I know where you'll find him now. He's gone back to the tomb, to his heathen gods. And you and I will follow him there. Wait a minute. What's his doctor's telephone number? Yuxford, 7-2.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Hair styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Look! The door's open and there's a light. I'll go no nearer. I'll go no nearer. I can see a shadow moving. I go no nearer. Well, then go back. What about it, Betty? Do we go on? Yes, of course. Thought you'd say that. So you're not a parson, just a dirty cook. You'd better get out of my way. Your hand, eh? So that's how it was done. I wouldn't come any nearer. I don't have to. Look, if you please. Thank you. Come on now.
know it's nothing. Come and sit down. Where's the key? He threw it away. When I phoned the doctor, I told him to bring the police. They ought to find us somehow. Well, even if they do come, how can they break down that door? They'll find a way. in charge didn't understand the case. I'm afraid of catalepsy. Really? Morland was buried alive. Oh, Mr. Dragore, what were those shots? Out of my way. Where are the others? Leave me alone! Ah! I rather thought you might be leaving in a hurry with something in your pocket that doesn't belong to you. Hand it over. You win. That woman! There she is! Come now. Oh, you put up your gun, you fool. I tell you, she's got it. Come on, then. Now, Miss Kenny, if you please. I don't think so. You fool. If either of you two horrible men so much as move, in it goes. But you don't know the value of that jewel. I don't care for the value. It'll go. And if you shoot, I'll go with it. I mean it. Down 30 feet. And about 60 feet of water. And, and, and then Australia. I can't see to tie this. That light seems much lower. Good. You can't breathe in there. The cartridge. It's here. If only. If only. I've had enough of this, Miss Kenny. Supposing I'm ready to shoot and take the risk. You'd be taking a bigger risk than you think. I'll take that gun, thank you. Now look here. That'll do. Now, what's the trouble? This. They're after it. All of them. It belongs. I'll carry her to the house.
And that ends the ghoul. I, I, I don't know what to think about that ending. I got to say I'm disappointed. You're disappointed. I'm disappointed because I wanted, I wanted Karloff to live. I wanted uh, the ring to stay in his possession. If he's and, alive, but if he's dead, he doesn't need it. I know, but I want him to live. And I wanted the uh, heroine and the hero to still go off and get married. You like, you know, they, they, they don't have to kill Carl. I wonder if they were using that code that, you know, you could not get away with crime in film. Probably. Remember that moral code that they once had? What do you think of the ending? This is 1933. She, she agrees with you. You do? She fully agrees It is 1933. With you. They did have a moral code. Right, yeah. right. You could not get away with crimes or murder, so... Well, you know, we'll show this one again in two years, maybe. Who knows? We'll, we'll have you back for it, and we'll see if you change I'd love to come back. Thank you. Know. But so what are you doing next? What's, what's fun and exciting for you? Well, you know, the only way to answer that is to send all my friends and family and fans to imdb.com because oh. they can tell you about me better than I can tell you about me. You're going to have a long read if you do that because it just goes for days. Oh, she wanted to present you with a bat because you were in Batman. I love that. And she felt that she did not get enough bat exposure in that film. So, so where's the Joker? There you go. Where's no, it's the a Joker? puppet. No, you can where's actually the put Joker? your hand inside and operate it as a puppet. Oh, I see. How cool. Oh, no. Where's the Joker? Where's see, the look, Joker? we've got Eric Roberts flying a bat on Creature Features. It's a first, right? Thanks to Tangella Incorporated. So IMDb, you could learn more, but you also have a website too. For people in more, right? My website is ericrobertsactor.com, but you can always Google me, always Google Keaton, or go to keatonsimons.com. And what is uh, Keaton? Keaton is uh, my music. Keaton you make music. Simons. What do you is play? Uh, he plays and he writes everything. In fact, he just got off tour with Eric Clapton. He opened for Eric Clapton. Now he's on tour playing with Brett Young. And this and is your son. Yeah, it's my stepson. You must be so proud. Oh, I am. Yeah. Well, you should have brought him. He probably had my band play before. He's on tour. Yeah. Oh, he's on he's tour. He's on tour with Brett yeah. Young. Yeah. He's probably better than I was. So. Oh, he's pretty great. Him. He's pretty great. Oh, don't you nod your head. She's so terrible to me. She's cute. Oh. She is, but she's, she's intolerable sometimes. Thank All you right. for the bat. Well, thank, you thank you for coming on the show and watching Anytime. this film with us. And next time you're in town, make sure you come see us. I love Boris Carla. Thank maybe, you. Maybe we'll go wine tasting or something. I don't drink, but I'll come watch. Well, no, 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 you go look at the plants and the, the, the bottles. That's what we do, right? Yeah, we right. And as far as you guys are concerned, thank you so much for watching the show. You know, we were disappointed when we heard you might not be watching, and we're so happy that you did. But watch next week. We're going to have a different guest, different movie, but the same old Tangella. You're not old, are you? She's getting there, but someday. All right, see you next week. So, Eric. You know, I'm thinking with all this exposure you're getting in music videos, should I ever like reignite the band and do a music video? Maybe you could star in one with me. I would love to be in a music video with you, but I've made my quota of music videos. We're only allowed to make so many. Sorry.